Good morning. I'm Dr. Darcy Collins, and I'm a scientist. I study lakes, and I study streams, and I work at the League to Save Lake Tahoe. We work to keep Tahoe blue. This is Lake Tahoe. Who's heard of Lake Tahoe? Let's see a show of hands. Wow, most of you. Who's been to Lake Tahoe? A lot of you have been there. It's not far at all from here. In fact, it's only a two-hour drive from Sacramento, and it's where I live. I was lucky enough to grow up there, and I think it's a very special place. It's the largest alpine lake in North America, and it's over 1,000 feet deep. It's the second deepest lake next to Crater Lake in Oregon. It's 12 miles wide, 22 miles long, and it has 72 miles of shoreline. It's located right on the border of Nevada and California, and it's known for being very, very blue and very clear. 22 million visitors visit Tahoe annually, and they come in 10 million cars. That's a lot of people. It's way more than the amount of people in this room today. That's even more than the amount of people that visit the top three national parks combined, like the Grand Canyon. That's more people than visit Disneyland each year. And they go to Tahoe to do the things they love, such as biking and hiking and swimming and water skiing and paddle boarding and snow skiing and snowshoeing. And they go to enjoy the beautiful, clear, clean blue waters. But Tahoe is facing a problem. It's losing its clarity each year. Clarity, which is how clear the water is, is also measured by how far light can penetrate into the water. The deeper that wa the light can penetrate, the clearer the water is. When I was your age, this is what I remember the lake to look like. I could go to the shoreline and wade out to my neck, and I could still see my toes. But unfortunately, more and more of the lake is looking like that picture on the left there. We're getting weeds on our shoreline, and algae, little plant particles, are growing in the water, and a lot of dirt is flowing into the water, and it doesn't look like that picture there on the right. Scientists have been measuring the clarity of Lake Tahoe since 1968, and when they started measuring in 1968, they could see over 100 feet deep. If you look at this graph here, on the left is how deep they were able to lower a white disk, and where they couldn't see it anymore, that's how deep the clarity is. And you can see way down, the deeper that the clarity is, the lower on that graph is the white disk, and you could see that in 1968 they could see over 100 feet deep. But as time went on and you move to the right of that graph, the clarity gets lower and lower and shallower and shallower. And we had our worst clarity reading just recently in 2017. 2014, there was a little bit of an improvement, and I'll explain why. But we've been losing clarity to a foot and a foot and a half each year. What is causing this? Climate change, also known as global warming, is where the Earth's temperature is warming up. And over the past hundred years, over the past century, it's warmed up at a rate much faster than ever before. And that doesn't just mean that we're getting nice warm weather, if only, that would be fantastic. It actually means that we're experiencing more intense and more unpredictable weather patterns. Those weather patterns are causing unusual storm years. For example, this last year we got a ton of snow in Tahoe. I can't even see my fence anymore because it hasn't melted yet, just like you got a lot of rain here. But that was preceded by a couple of years of drought. And that picture up there shows Lake Tahoe in 2014. You can see the water level is very low. The piers are out of the water, there's a boat up on the shore, and that was actually the year that we got that little better clarity reading. And the reason was there wasn't any rain that would wash away some of the dirt that had built up in the streams. So there wasn't all of that dirt going into the water. But then, a couple years after that, in 2017, we got a lot of rain. And a lot of that rain didn't fall as snow, it fell as rain, and it caused flooding. And that flooding 
washed a lot of that sediment into the lake. And that sediment in dirt stayed suspended, and that's why we got, part of the reason why we got that horrible clarity reading. Then that was also followed by some really warm temperatures. So the, after the winter, in the summer months, we got really hot temperatures, and the surface water increased to the highest temperatures we've ever had on record. And that caused a lot of those weeds that you saw in the earlier picture to grow along the shoreline. They like warm water. And then we got algae. This is a picture of a big truckload of those weeds that we took out of the water because they're not native to Tahoe and we don't want them there. So we're starting to see that there's a lot more of these weeds growing on the lake and then we're not getting that beautiful clear water that I remember. Also, we're getting a lot of people visiting Tahoe which is great, it's such a beautiful place, I wanna make sure that everyone can go there and enjoy it. But with all those people come a ton of cars, and the cars cause more pollution. So the more cars that drive over the roads, they grind up the small pieces of dirt or sediment that are on the roads into very, very tiny pieces. And those pieces will wash their way into the lake and stay suspended and cause more clarity loss. So the question is, are we at an ecological tipping point in Tahoe? Ecological tipping point, what is that? Well, let's start with ecology. I think most of you know what ecology is. Raise your hand if you remember. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Ecology is the study of living things and their environment. For example, if you study a bear, you can just learn about the bear. But if you want to study the bear's ecology, you will learn about not just the bear, but their food source, their habitat, how the weather impacts their habitat, how the weather impacts their food source, and how the weather impacts their migration patterns. You're learning about everything that impacts that bear. So an ecological tipping point is when the surrounding environment is so impacted, things are impacting everything, that we can't return to a natural state. So in the case of Tahoe, a tipping point would be where we can't return to that 100 feet clarity level that the scientists recorded in 1968. And it would mean that the lake would not always be blue and instead will tip to green. Now I work with my team to make sure we're addressing the threat so that we don't reach that ecological tipping point. At the League to Save Lake Tahoe, we work to protect Tahoe and to keep it blue. And there's a lot of things that we are doing to make sure we're not reaching that tipping point. We go and talk to our decision makers, like those here in Sacramento at the Capitol or in Washington, D.C., and we encourage them to adopt good environmental laws. We also are trying new innovative technologies. So I work with my team to identify things that might help us protect the lake, and then we try them out. For example, we've stolen an idea from nature. In nature, a lot of whales will use bubble curtains, so they'll blow bubbles to capture their prey or their food source. And we thought, well, that might be an easy way that we can prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species, which are those weeds that I showed you earlier. So we installed a pipe along the bottom of some of the channels and this pipe will blow bubbles up and create a bubble curtain. And this bubble curtain allows boats or swimmers to pass through, but it'll capture the weeds so that they get contained in the channels and won't spread to the rest of the lake. And so far, it's been fairly effective, and it was such a simple way to help protect the lake. We've also encouraged our decision makers to pass laws such as plastic bag bans or styrofoam bans. And we were able to do this by using data or information that was collected by volunteers who volunteer to help us clean up the beach and clean up other areas. And these volunteers collect data or information on what they're picking up. And they found that they were finding a bunch of small pieces of plastic and a bunch of little pieces of styrofoam. So we categorized that, quantified it, and we took that information to our city council members and convinced them to pass these bans that encourage our local businesses not to use styrofoam and not to use plastic bags. There are also things that you can all do when you go to Tahoe to help us protect it. 
You can download this app that we created in partnership with UC Davis that helps you to learn how to identify these invasive weeds. And you could learn and teach yourself what they look like. And then if you're out enjoying Lake Tahoe or swimming or paddleboarding and you see these weeds, you'll know what they look like. You could upload that information to the app, let us know through the app, and we'll go out and remove them. It's a fun way to help protect Tahoe while you're playing. You could also do a lot of things to protect Tahoe that you could also do at home, including picking up trash, joining beach cleanups, encouraging your local businesses to adopt environmentally friendly practices, all things that not only help protect Tahoe, but help to protect the environment in your own home. We all need to work together to protect the places we love, especially a place like Lake Tahoe that doesn't have the protections of the natural National Park Service, but they have, it is an important ecological treasure. And now is the time to act before Tahoe reaches that ecological tipping point. Thank you.